In our second module, we will briefly cover what research requires review at Carleton University. More specifically, REB review is required for all research that includes the collection or the use of data from human participants. At Carleton, ethics clearance requirements apply to all research conducted by faculty members, students, postdoctoral fellows, research assistants, and adjunct professors. This is true regardless of the research being funded or not, and regardless of where the research is being conducted. Data collection might take place on campus or off campus, in businesses, in hospitals, in prisons, in schools, or in communities. And the research project may also be approved by another academic institution or external research ethics board. In all cases, Carleton researchers require ethics clearance from the Carleton University Research Ethics Board. If the researcher is a student, they will also require a research supervisor. Finally, researchers from outside of Carleton are asked to contact the Carleton University Research Ethics Board to see if Carleton clearance is required to do their data collection at Carleton. To begin, please note that not all activities taking place at Carleton are considered research requiring review by a Carleton Research Ethics Board. According to Tri-Council, research requiring review is defined as an undertaking intended to extend knowledge through a disciplined inquiry and or a systematic investigation. The term disciplined inquiry refers to an inquiry that is conducted with the expectation that the method, results, and conclusions will be able to withstand the scrutiny of the relevant research community. In other words, the goal of the research must be to contribute new knowledge to a field or discipline, and this is achieved by using the rules, methods, and techniques generally accepted within a discipline to answer a research question. The following research activities require review by the Carleton University Research Ethics Board before the research can begin. This might include research with human participants, in person or electronically, through surveys, interviews, focus groups, user studies, or observational studies. This also applies to research using the human biological samples and materials such as blood samples, saliva samples, reproductive materials, or stem cells from human participants, whether they are living or deceased. With human biological materials, the REB is primarily concerned that the proposed use of the sample is consistent with the participant's understanding of how that data or how that material would be used going forward. Additionally, the REB is looking at whether or not there would be any harm to any individuals as a result of using those samples. Furthermore, we will be checking whether or not the researcher has all the requisite permissions needed to obtain or to access those samples for their research. In addition to ethics clearance, researchers at Carleton will also need to contact the Biohazards Committee to learn whether or not there are any requirements for working with those biological materials at Carleton University. Research involving the secondary use of data also requires ethics clearance. This commonly applies to studies where a researcher would like to use a previously collected data set to answer a new research question. In this case, we consider this a secondary research question or secondary use of the previously collected data. This category also commonly applies to all manner of data sets that you would like to use for a research purpose, such as school records, health records and charts, records from Statistics Canada, where special access is required to obtain the data, penitentiary records, or even business records. Similarly here, Kirib is concerned that all permissions and agreements to access the data are in place and that no harm will come to the individual or community from the use of this data. The exception to this rule applies to research involving the secondary analysis of truly anonymous data. Truly anonymous data 
is data that has never at any point had any identifiers associated with it. For example, an anonymous survey mailed to the research team in a pre-stamped envelope would be truly anonymous and the risk of identifying the individuals who completed the survey would be low or very low. However, it can be very difficult to know if a researcher is working with an anonymous data set. This is especially true if the researcher is working with a data set that they did not collect themselves. In such cases, we recommend the researcher contact the Research Ethics Board to see if clearance is required. Finally, ethics clearance is also required when Carleton researchers have clearance from an external research ethics board. In this case, we do not want to subject Carleton researchers to having to go through the whole review process twice. Instead, we ask for a cover letter explaining the project, along with a copy of the external research ethics board application and clearance, so that we have this on file for our own records and we perform an expedited review of these materials. Please contact us for more information if this applies to you. Please note that the Tri-Council has also outlined several cases where ethics review is not required. This includes passive observational research in public places where there's no reasonable expectation for privacy, such as observations on the city street, one caveat to this is that there should be no interactions of any kind with the individuals and no recordings of them, neither photographs, audios, or video recordings. Quality assessment and quality improvement studies are also exempt from review. These include internal program evaluations, performance reviews, or testing for curriculum development or evaluation purposes. QI and QA studies are designed to bring about immediate improvement in service delivery in particular settings. These are not designed to create new knowledge within a discipline that can be generalized to other populations or settings. Thirdly, the use of publicly available information is also exempt from review. This is information that is legally accessible to the public and for which there is no reasonable expectation for privacy. A good example for this would be Twitter data. And finally, as we already discussed, research involving the secondary use of truly anonymous information does not require review. Once again, the line between research requiring review and research that is exempt can be blurry. We do encourage people to contact our office for any and all questions. Once you submit your ethics application, your project is reviewed by the Carleton University Research Ethics Board. The mandate of the Research Ethics Board is to review the ethical acceptability of research with human participants. More specifically, the REB will weigh the risks and the benefits of the research, assess whether all possible steps to mitigate the risk to participants have been taken, and consequently, ensure that the research is being conducted as safely as it can be. The board itself is appointed by the Vice President of Research. It's made up of a variety of faculty members from across the university, from all disciplines, as well as several community members, student representatives, and individuals with specific legal, privacy, or other expertise to review the research from the different disciplines. It's important to note that the Research Ethics Board is independent of the university with autonomous decision-making power to ensure that the participants are protected based on the Tri-Council policy statement. Consequently, the REB can approve, reject, or ask for modifications for any research projects with human participants. All ethical concerns raised by the board to protect participants must be satisfied prior to granting clearance. In very rare cases, the REB may even decide that the risks of the proposed research are too great and that the study cannot be approved as submitted. In such cases, we do have a formal appeal process in place. Details of the appeal process can be viewed on our website. At Carleton University, 
we receive a high volume of ethics applications. Consequently, we actually have two research ethics boards that review research with human participants, and these boards are delineated by expertise. Curb A reviews all research, where the lead researcher is from the Faculty of Public Affairs, the Sprott School of Business, or the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Cure B, on the other hand, reviews ethics applications submitted by a lead researcher from the Faculty of Engineering and Design, the Faculty of Science, the Department of Psychology, or the Institute of Cognitive Science. Cure B will also review research from any department when the researcher plans to do one of the following. Conduct research involving the collection or use of bodily tissues or fluids. Conduct research making use of a bioinstrument such as the application of electrodes, x-ray images, or blood pressure technology on the body. Or finally, the use of a biointervention. This might be the administration of a drug or device, um, or research that induces stress in a participant, or research to test out a new rehabilitative program. In all cases, regardless of the department of the researcher, um, Cured B will review the research. There may be cases where uh, a research team has um, experience from a variety of disciplines. Please contact your, our office and we will help you through the process. For any questions about research requiring review, please email us at ethics at or check out our website. Thank you.